Hello everyone, it's June 1st. Can you believe that half the year is already in the books? Today we'll be looking at how the plants in the backyard are doing and we'll be talking a little bit about how sometimes things don't go according to plan and that's okay, that's very typical of many gardens and that's something that I feel is important to cover on this channel as well. Just to show that um, you as a gardener will run into problems just like other gardeners will and that's okay. Things don't always work out, but um, we can pretty much go around them and work accordingly. So as far as the weather, it's been overcast the last couple months and it's kind of slowed down some of the growth of many of our plants, but nonetheless, they continue on. And if you have a few moments today, um, join us as we take a look and see what's growing. All right, we'll start here in the uh, succulent planter and um, show some of the plants that we planted from our LA Flower District outing, um, like this Kalakui, and then this one, I forget the name. Um, this thimble cactus is one that's been here and it's flowering, so it looks really cool. And then our variegated, uh, I think these are rabbit's ear cactus, so it's been repotted. I like to get succulents that are in the smallest pot they're the best value since they grow pretty quickly. Um, just having a little plant is uh, enough for me to basically uh, maximize and get different varieties. So um, this one was repotted to a larger pot. Once it grows uh, into this pot, we'll go and put it into the ground. We have also some succulents um, that came from a bouquet or arrangement. It was a Mother's Day arrangement and um, from our second child or my wife's uh, first Mother's Day with our second child. So these are it right here, including that one. And this one was from uh, Mother's Day number one. So succulents are a great way to remember events by. But they're also great gifts. And this is one that was, this is a Haworthia. It's been growing in this pot. And then this one was recently put together from the succulents that we, we got from the flower district. And um, they're gonna be uh, gifts, end of year gifts for my son's teacher. Um, he's enrolled, we, uh, he and I are enrolled in a parent-child enrichment course. And it's a great program. And um, we have wonderful teachers, very passionate teachers. So. This is our way to show our appreciation. Most of the content on this video um, is shaped by really passionate teachers and uh, very, very fortunate to have many great teachers uh, in my educational career or my education. Um, we're looking at tomatoes and this can be a pseudo tomato update. One of the things that I learned from viewer comments is that tomatoes will put out these things called mega blooms and basically they're just very very large flowers that result in large tomatoes and they usually come when there is a cold front so you have warm weather and then suddenly there's cold weather they're more likely to form uh, sometimes they're just a merger of two flowers so you'll get a large tomato that that um, is not too symmetric um, but we have a brandy wine that looks like it's just one one tomato so hopefully it'll get nice and big. Over here is a Black Prince tomato and they're already producing so one of the things that I'm curious about is whether tomatoes grow um, better if they're from seeds that you collect so when this season's done we're going to collect the seeds of all the tomato varieties here and looking forward to next year and planting them and seeing at what rate they start to produce fruit. Um, as far as growth the Black Prince grows pretty quickly and we're already starting to train it onto this um, buttress, I guess we can call it, where we run a, a line to the uh, eaves and it's got enough clearance where we can walk under it without cutting our heads off. Down below, we notice that there are um, droppings of some kind of caterpillar and that's okay with me because we normally go and trim off some of the growth anyway, so why not leave the caterpillar and let it 
help the breakdown process of the um, leaves by turning it to caterpillar manure. So it just works out um, naturally that the caterpillar is probably going to want to hang out where we're going to trim the leaves anyway, which is below here, as opposed to on top where, where they can be spotted by the birds. So um, yeah, that we're okay with that. Um, we'll swing around the front and look at our brandywine tomato and this one was a mega bloom and it looks like it's just one um, tomato so it's gonna be a really nice looking tomato on our raised planter we have some yellow sweet Spanish Utah onions and then we're starting to do our succession planting of vegetables like the bok choy and that's something that uh, wasn't very um, tedious about so uh, we have we're working on that and we have some that are directly sown that are popping up like for instance over here and then morph bok choy some succession green onion a volunteer cranberry hibiscus uh, spinach that's bolting just debating whether or not to leave them here and save the seed or just remove them some gailan chinese kale red core chantenay carrots some more chinese kale they're starting to get um, fibrous so we're gonna have to cut them and hopefully they'll send out side shoots so we can get another harvest. Walla Walla onions. And we're doing more, more planting, more seed sowing. We have some sugar babies. These are watermelons, um, orange glow. And I guess the birds aren't done yet. So we're gonna end up having to cover them back up because they already started chewing on some of the leaves. Um, some of the holy basil from the USDA seed bank, and we'll save that for a different episode. We'll talk some more about them. And over here is another raised bed. We had some more tomatoes, but they didn't work out, so we just removed them. This is another Black Prince, and it's growing quickly, and we're already starting to train it up, this uh, line here. Down below in front are some more vegetables. These are um, Gailan, the leafy ones that were grown from seed that we saved. Over there are some uh, Hawaii number no. 9 corn and hopefully more will germinate. It looked like it, the seed that seed um, stock that we had might have been damaged by some um, beetle larva. So hopefully not too much and we'll get more corn coming in. Some more um, bok choy. some dill and um, our blueberry plant sunshine blue reach in there and grab a blueberry real quick over there are some blackberries and this was um, discovered by happenstance where the kale leaves that we just kind of yanked off and threw on the ground well they were covering or they are covering our blackberry from the birds. So it's a good way to hide the blackberries from birds. Let's go and pick one. That one's tart. Ooh, that one's tart. I had one earlier and it wasn't as tart. So we'll go and cover these blackberries back up and hide them from the birds. That one is a thornless one. And then next is a thorn one from my brother's garden that we we saw last last week. It's not making blueberries yet, or blackberries yet. These are succession um, early prolific squash. So we have one and two there. Some air cover beans. Um, this is the uh, Asian eggplant from. Uh, seeds are from Bob Mel's garden. Over there is a bitter melon that didn't take off. Something had chewed off the terminal end and it's not going to make new so side shoots it looks like. So we'll have to go back to the drawing board on that one. Uh, we have some heirloom cucumbers. These are the ones that we're growing for the first time. These are English Telegraph Improved. So they look like a a pickling cucumber but really long 
that one's ready to be harvested. And then there's some corn there. We have some Italian Roma tomatoes. And then let's see here. Looks like there is a bug on here because there's there are caterpillar droppings. And once again, it's okay that they're here. They're not doing too much damage. Um, oh, here it is. So he could be a good meal for our, our cichlid. Uh, so maybe we'll come and give him as a snack later on. But nonetheless, um, we're okay with it. The, the plant here is being grown cageless. So we'll cover this again in a tomato update, but just want to show you real quick. It's sending out these stabilizer um, branches down to help the plant prop itself up. These are like legs on a tripod, or if you've seen a earth mover where they put the stabilizers down before they work, this is the same thing with the tomatoes. And then we're getting some fruit there. Um, they've been hilled up with some mixture of California clay and mulch. So I think we're not gonna hill them up too much just to make sure we don't suffocate the plant. And um, looks like we're gonna get a good amount of tomatoes. So we're gonna keep an eye on it and see if it needs a cage. Hopefully not, because it may, because the fruit will get heavier and heavier as it gets bigger. The other key is to not water the plant from above because the water will weigh the plant. And if it breaks, it will lose its integrity. So best not to to water it from the top. Behind are some of the things that didn't work out. Our okra, we were hoping that we can grow the okra and it'll grow nice and tall and not get blocked out by the tomatoes. But with the cool weather, they haven't been growing. And basically at this point now, they're, it's, it's almost like a snowball effect because the tomatoes are gonna block the sun from, from them. Our, Ozark Beauty um, strawberries are, haven't come in yet. These are supposed to come in, in in June, so we'll see. We have some blossoms. It's been blossoming, but nothing too great. Like We'll get something like this, but nothing too great yet. Maybe next year, because this is also, also a very new um, growing area, so maybe there's not enough nutrients saved from last year into the plant for it to make good fruit this year. So, um, down this way we have King Richard Leek and it's going to blossom so we'll have seeds to collect. This is our patch of corn, golden band of corn. And then um, this is a citrus tree grown from seed. This is a King Mandarin. There are two, two plants here and some basil in, in the same pot. Some English thyme, reed avocado over there. This is garlic chive. This is gonna be harvest number three this year. And hopefully um, we can do a video for you on making some garlic chive boiled dumplings. Really easy and delicious recipe. In this container, we have some purple potatoes that are coming out. They, these were recently planted. And then we have some sugar baby watermelon, which is that one, and some beans over there. Um, this is a Latham red raspberry, and I've been trying to train it onto this stick here, but it keeps coming loose. So maybe it's not tall enough, long enough yet. Some russet potatoes that are ready to harvest, so we'll, we'll dig them out in a couple days. Um, Heritage, raspberry, we had a uh, guard, yard work mishap and uh, it broke off. Um, some more Italian Romas. And then our corn patch. There's a blue Java ice cream banana. And then there's a bitter melon in the back and that was injured by gardening yard work mishap. But it looks like it may be making some new shoots, so hopefully it will. We'll have some bitter melon. This is a giant pumpkin. This is the Atlantic Giant, one that we uh, thinned out in the Giant Pumpkin update, and I quickly put it down here, and it surprisingly grew. And it's um, 
what's here now. Some Hopi yellow watermelon, and I'm hoping this will make watermelon for us. Let's go ahead and thin out the other one. Oops, the blade of corn is blocking view. So, and then there's another one over there. This is a uh, red potato that we did a harvest last year, and I guess we forgot or didn't see it, and it's been in the ground all year, and now it's come out as a plant. So, um, over here are some more potatoes. It was originally planned that we would grow our veggies on top while we waited for the potato to come out the ground, but I guess if a potato has an eye on it and you put it in the ground, it will, it will shoot out new growth. Um, something that wasn't planned, but it looks like it works out because it's shading our, our gailan and our spinach. And it's making them look really, really big. And um, it's also protecting them from some of the bugs. So compared to the uh, gailan in the raised planter, these, are, these leaves are nice and green and big. We have some ornamental corn here. And this is our gold nugget citrus tree. It's a mandarin. It's, the fruits are getting bigger. Over there are some early prolific yellow squash. These are straight necks. And looks like there's a little bee trying to pollinate it in there. Thompson's seen the scrape. It's not growing as quickly as our red flame, but it's growing. Hopefully it'll grow over that way. Um, it's a plumeria, some gladiolus. This is our black beauty zucchini, and it's forming a zucchini. Let me get in there and move the leaf out of the way. If the tips are, are very pointy and dry, that means the fruit didn't get pollinated. It's best to remove them. Over there is a stump, and that's one that we um, removed because it didn't get pollinated, and they're, they're not very tasty anyways. We have lots of new female zucchini buds. So once it warms up and once this plant gets to a certain maturity, it, it's a squash producing machine and you only really need one to get a lot of um, produce from it. Two is better to help pollination. That one is another Black Beauty um, zucchini. It's a succession one. And that one over there is a, is a um, poppy. I forget what color it is, but hopefully it's a black swan. It's got the poppy pod there. Jalapeno pepper. These are, in this row are some Anaheim. And these are the Utah onions. These are Fushimi. And this is our blood orange, our moral. No, no flower buds yet. Pakistan mulberry. It's going to stay in this container. I'm not entirely confident that the roots have taken, like basically have bound itself. So if I remove it from the container, I'm afraid it might get uh, some transplant shock. So we'll, we'll plant it maybe next year. Some extra peppers, some more telegraph cucumbers. It's taking over and covering some of our um, yellow mountain sweet watermelon. And over here, we'll wait for the airplane to go by. Over here are some Atlantic giant um, pumpkins. Some mint. Um, bear's lime. Our Klondike striped blue ribbon watermelon patch. Some peppers here. These are um, Maanjis. So we got three of them. Over there is a California Wonder Bell Pepper. This is a Dahlia. Well, ho hopefully it'll flower. And um, it's a walnut tree. Some Timothy hay. This is for a rabbit. So we have some Timothy hay here. Um, here's our panache fig, tiger fig. Very pretty fruit looks like they're very, very individualized as far as their, um, their form and their pattern. This one has really nice thick bands on it. 
and I guess we'll come this way. It's uh, this is our we put, we put it some, we put some corn in here, the Indian painted hill corn or just painted hill, and all this stuff here is a work in progress. We have some more cucumbers in here. Let's see if I got the plant tag. This is the sweet market more heirloom cucumbers. There's two. There are two plants here. I don't see any cucumbers yet. And then on the other side is where we have our wasabi plant. So we'll go back this way. These are some, um, in here are some orange seeds and we're growing them for rootstock. So we'll try our hand at grafting once they become plants. Moringa from Bob Mills Garden. And um, over here, we have some uh, papaya growing from seed. We're going to try the Hawaiian papaya again. It's uh, Once again, the color of the pot makes a huge difference. This black pot resulted in germination of plants uh, three days ahead uh, faster than these guys. Some daylily. Uh, this is our red flame seedless grape, and it's growing up onto our patio now. Some arugula, dragon's tongue. These are purple carrots. This is a lalo. Um, this is cardamom. And our, our turmeric is coming in. I always call these guys, I want to always call it uh, cumin. And you can see when I mark this or label this pot, I started with cumin. So it's not going to be the last time that I'll call it cumin and then correct myself. So it's turmeric. This is a uh, sanguinelli blood orange. It's got some oranges there. Some oranges there. And um, our reed avocado continues to grow, but no sight of blossoms yet. And over here, uh, some ginger and some wing beans. So the idea is hopefully these guys, this wing bean will create shade for our patio because on the other side is where we have our wasabi plants. And that pretty much is the yard, backyard. And before we check out, we'll go to the middle and look at some of the citrus. This is a yuzu. It's starting to ripen. The yellow is coming in. Taraco blood orange. And then this is a Robertson navel orange. Um, and what I like about these guys is they are, they will be ready in December as opposed to January, uh, where many of the um, navel oranges are, uh, navel orange varieties are ready. Well, I think that's going to be uh, it for this tour today. Um, everything's coming along. We're waiting for the weather to warm up. Um, and hopefully we'll start to be able to harvest a lot of things soon. And um, I guess uh, with that, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.